Hi everyone. I had a subscriber reach out to me and ask me to make a video on how to shorten a dress shirt sleeve eight inches for her grandson who has dwarfism. Now I reached out to her to find out if there were other measurements that I needed to take into consideration for the body or the armhole and I didn't hear back from her. So I'm only shortening the sleeve and doing what I feel is the right way to do it. I've never shortened a sleeve that much and put a cuff back on it. I've taken a cuff off, I've taken a placket off, I've shortened it half inch, two inches and three inches, but never eight inches. So there are a couple of things you need to consider when shortening it that much, and we'll go through that in the video. Okay, so what we need to do is first, we're going to take off the cuff. We're going to measure up eight inches, and that's where we'll make the cut but there are some things that we need to consider before that because when you take up eight inches you're going to lose all of this so the, all this will have to be removed and everything moved up and i'll show you how to do that so when taking off the cuff and placket just be careful that um, you don't cut your shirt. Usually if you can pop one stitch, it'll loosen up for you. Let's hope that works here. Now these are kind of tight, so I'm going to pull it back like this and just pop the stitches with the point. If you have a um, razor blade, this will be a good time to pull it out. I don't have one, so I can't. I have a... Um, a scalpel but the blade is really dull so I'm not really sure if that's going to be helpful for me I think I just cut the shirt a little bit and if you do don't worry about it because it's all going to be cut off just try not to cut your cuff There we go. So the cuff is off. Now we'll work on the placket. And it goes for the same here. Just be careful and try not to um, cut the shirt. Now this is put on a, a little differently than the ones I've shown you in the past. So um, what they did was they when they made the placket, they made the one piece of fabric and they folded it. So this is the fold. And then they sewed the two raw edges together onto the shirt. Then they opened that placket up. So instead of like this, it's gonna be opened like this and laid over and then stitched down. And I'll show you what that looks like uh, when I get there. And then, um, yeah, it's a little different here, but the inside is still a nice clean 
finish. So I'll show you what it looks like. So there's an issue right here because this area that's sewn in onto the placket is also sewn by the buttonhole. So if you guys have a placket like this, you might have to fix the buttonhole, I guess, unless you want to try and cut around it. I'm going to cut around it just in case you run into the same problem we'll see if it can be resolved just by cutting around it because it would be easier probably to do that than to mess with that buttonhole okay so you see i've got all this unsewn and it's just held together by that little bit of the buttonhole but if you cut the buttonhole you mess it up. So I'm just going to snip around this and I'm just going to use my seam ripper get as close as I can to it. And so now I have a little a little divot in my shirt. But you know what? That's that's all coming off. So I guess it doesn't really matter. Okay. What I'm going to do is take this to the ironing board and I'm going to press out all of the creases after I take the small part of the placket off. So I'm going to take the button off because that might be sewn to it as well. Okay, and this one is sewn basically the same way. They folded the placket and then sewed the raw, ed sewed the <laughs> raw edges to the um, raw edge of that slit. Okay, now I will take this to the ironing board. Before I go any further on the adjustment to the sleeve, I wanted to show you the placket. Okay, so this is what it looks like. And how they did it was they made it like they took the piece of fabric and if this is, so it is a three inch piece of fabric. They folded it in half and then they sewed this on to the shirt. And then when they pressed it over, they opened up the placket and then flattened it out like this. Now, because I was going over showing you this, it looks like I might have to cut on either side of the buttonhole because this gives me nothing to sew to the shirt. So this is just trial and error. We'll see what will happen when I do this. 
and then if it doesn't work maybe something will come to mind for you on how to resolve this issue but at this point this is the only thing I can think of now with the smaller placket piece it's the same type of thing they had the piece of fabric they folded it in half sewed this raw edge to the raw edge of the slit and then they just fold it all the way over and encase the raw edge with the top stitching. So these will be sewn to the inside of the sleeve and folded out so that when it's top stitched down, it'll, it'll be sewn to the back side like this. So the shirt will be on top. And then when they're done, they fold it all the way over like this top stitch and everything's in case and everything on the other side looks good. So now we need to get the sleeve. Okay, when you're doing this alteration, please don't skip this step because when I did the first sleeve in the first video and then I felt like it wasn't good enough, um, this is what I hadn't worked through in my mind. So what I'm going to do is measure up eight inches. This is going, going to be very important because you're cutting off this here and you're going to have to recreate it. So please don't, don't miss this step. So that is the line we're working on. I'm going to put this here to make sure it's going to be straight across. Now this is a used shirt, it's very flimsy fabric. So it's not always the easiest. It's not like a nice crisp fabric to work with, but we're going to do our best. So you're making the new cut line. I don't know if you can see that, but I can see it. So. As long as you can see your own marks that's good okay so that's our new cut line now we're cutting this off so now we have to move this up here and so what we're going to do is measure how long that cut line is and it is let me see where it's cut at five and three quarter inches so I'm taking it along you can see how it's cut right between these three lines and these three lines I'm going to take it in the same exact place so everything's in the same position okay we're trying to avoid any mishaps or any guesswork after we get everything cut off we don't want to have to go through that make sure you can see your marks i am going to do a little cross mark here just so i We'll remember to stop. Okay, so we have the new cut line here and we have the new cut line here. Now, when you are shortening your sleeve, because you don't wanna, if you don't plan to adjust your cuff at all, then you want to make this width the same as this width so that the pleats will be the same, everything will fit into the cuff the same. If you need to adjust your cuff, I will leave a card up above to show you how to adjust the size of your cuff. If you need it, I think I, I think I did it just this way, but in the video, you might be able to see where at the same time you can adjust it this way if you need to. So what I'm going to do is take this to this cut line, align it, and you can see where it ends right there. So we are going to make this line here now we're, we're gonna have to transfer this on the inside but don't worry about that we'll take care of it so we've got our new length cut we've got our new slit cuff and we have our new width cut so um, the first thing I'm going to do is cut this off Okay, so the order I'm going to do this is I'm going to cut the length first. That's both layers of the sleeve. Okay, then I'm going to open it up and I'm only going to cut this layer, the top layer. You don't want to cut through both layers. And I made my cross line here so I know not to cut past there. Okay, now 
I'm going to put a pin right here. And I'm going to turn the shirt inside out. And I want you to locate that pin, which is right here. Now you take your chalk and you mark that. Okay, then you can take your chalk out, or your pin out. Now this shirt has a flat felt seam, but I am not going to undo the flat felt seam. I will leave a card up above so you can see how a flat filled seam is um, adjusted. But I'm going to just take my serger and serge this off and it'll blend right back into the arm. Because this person has dwarfism and the grandmother didn't say anything else about the body, I'm strictly doing the sleeves. And because she didn't say the body needed to be adjusted, I'm just going to blend this back out using my serger and then we'll flip it, rest that out, and then do the placket and then do the Now, if you feel comfortable just free handing it, you know, free hand drawing it, or if you want to serge it, you can do that, or you can use a ruler. And if you use a ruler, I would try to use like a curved one. I would definitely start straight here because that's where you're going to sew the cup on. So right about there. So after that cut line, you can start blending it. Yes, my ruler is broken. So if I want to blend it here, and then I can just try to blend it out. So I'm going to start here and then come out to here. And that's the line I'm going to use. Okay. Um, I hope you can see this okay. My sewing machine light went out and I haven't been able to um, replace it yet. So Okay, so I'm just going to line that chalk line up with my, um, I'm going to line it up with my left needle and then just sew and trim it all off. Now, if you um, cut these off, you're running the risk of this coming undone. So I take a blunt needle like this. I honestly, I don't know what they're called, um, but what I do, I don't know if it's not darning, but I don't even know what it's called, but this is what I use it for. I just thread the needle and I run it through. It doesn't have to be this long if you don't want it to be. So you take it down here, pull it through, and then I'll trim it at this point. So it's kind of tucked in out of the way. And then you can do it with this other end as well. All the um, tools I use will be linked in the description box if you guys are interested in purchasing these needles or these tools. Um, anything you purchase, I will get a cut of um, Amazon's, uh, I guess, portion. It doesn't cost you anything else for me to get paid. So, okay. Now I'm going to the um, ironing board and I'm going to press that before I do anything else. Okay, well, I don't have my handy little snips. 
I did some Santa sewing with my friend the other day and I guess I left him at her house. So right now I'm working on the placket and I'm just going to snip a little bit on each side, just enough to get that seam allowance free so I can sew it. Wow. Okay, so I just kind of snipped that up a little bit. I hope you guys can see that. That way I can sew from here to here, stop, and then from here to there. And we'll see how that turns out. So I press my sleeve. I'm going to turn it inside out again. Uh-oh, wait a minute. Okay, so I'm looking at the back of the shirt. Here's the slit. The small placket will be sewn to this side. I'm gonna pin it here so we don't get confused. And then this one will be sewn to that part on the inside of the shirt. Because I get kind of turned around when the shirt is, especially if there's flat felt seams, it's kind of hard to remember which is the, the inside of the shirt, which is the outside of the shirt. Okay, so this is going to be the, here's a good way to do it. The smaller placket is closest to the underarm. So we need to actually sew that one on first. So we're going to, this was sewn to the bottom, I believe. Or is it the top? Okay. I should have paid attention to that, but I didn't. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna be sewn here and then it's going to be flipped over like this and sewn down on this side. Okay, yeah, I had it the wrong way. So open that seam allowance and start pinning it. Okay, because I'm recording and I don't want to have to, you know, switch back and forth with putting the machine up and taking it down, I'm going to pin both of them in place right now. Okay, everything is sewn in. Okay, now I'm going to start sewing with the um, the smaller pocket. And as you're sewing, just follow the previous um, sewing line, which will be the crease. Okay. 
make sure that all the fabric underneath is lined flat so that you don't get anything caught up in the stitching that's not supposed to be there. Okay, we're going to turn this around to the right side. I'm not going to stitch it down right now. I'm just going to show you what it's going to look like because I need to press it first. So that's what it's going to look like and then you just top stitch it down. So now I'm going to work on the larger piece. Make sure the flat, the fabric underneath is flat. Nothing's caught under there. Now this is where, okay, look, something's going on here. Okay, so I tried to open up the placket so I wouldn't get the fabric caught, but I wasn't able to do it where the buttonhole is. So this should be interesting. <laughs> There's the crease. It's gonna go right. I just have to be careful for this fabric right here as it's getting close to the buttonhole. So use your fingers and just feel for it. Make sure that fabric is out of the way and follow the crease. Okay, I'm going to try and just go right past it without hitting the buttonhole so I don't have to stop and start again. So let my mistakes be your lesson. I'm going to try and pull this fabric over a little bit. Okay, I turned my shirt right side out. Now I'm going to show you how you do this because this does look kind of scary because if you can't work through it in your mind, you don't know what to expect. So we're going to start with this small placket. Now again, I'm not going to sew this down just yet. I'm just gonna show you what it looks like. Now there was a little creasing up here on the original just because of the nature of what we're doing here. Now the big placket, we're gonna bring out, and you're kind of going, well, when I first did this, I was like, what the heck? How is this supposed to lay down? So what you do is you bring this part here, and you just cover that placket, and then adjust this, and it kind of does itself. It kind of lays itself out, and then you can see how it works. Now, when you look under here, you have that little part of your um, shirt that buttonhole looks like it might be covered just a little bit you you might be able to just get your button in there and if you don't ever if you don't ever open it it shouldn't be a problem just get the button in the buttonhole and you don't have to deal with it again so this is what it will look like when we're finished but I'm going to go press everything out and then I'll come back and then we'll sew it up. Okay, before we go any further, I want to remind you guys, um, when you take the placket off, please do not open up the placket and press it out and all that, especially if you're a beginner, because you have this fold going on here. And if you can't remember how to get it folded the way it was, it's just gonna be a pain that you probably don't wanna deal with. So what I do is I will take it, once I get it off, I'll lay it like this and I'll press it. I don't open anything up, I don't do all that. And that goes with the cuff. There was a little bit of fold up here, so I folded it back down 
and you can see right here where it was folded up and I just pressed it back down. I didn't undo its natural folds for being sewn back on. Um, that will just cause more headache than I'm sure you want to deal with. So this is what it looks like once it's um, pressed down. I'm having a little issue up here. It doesn't want to lay right. So I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to trim it just a little bit. Just right here. Because I feel like that little piece is kind of getting hung up there. Like it's not all coming out. See right there. As long as my cut doesn't go too high, it should be fine. Let's see where that is. Okay, so there's where it's sewn. So I can't go past that. So. And none of that is going to unravel anyway. Because this will be sewn on and there's it's just not going to undo itself. So I pull it back out to the right side. And I'm going to pin it. Now, if there's any kind of tweaking that you don't like, now would probably be the time to pin it in the right places. Okay, so I'm going to sew that down and then um, I'll go back and pin this side down and then sew it up and then we'll get the cuff back on. Okay, I'm going to get it in position where... There's no fabric underneath it. I'll put my needle down first. That way I can move the pin out of the way. Okay, I'm going to try and slide this in here so pinning would be easier. Hopefully it's small enough. That way I don't pin the other side of the shirt. I see a little stress going on here. Okay, so we're going to bring this out. Yeah, this might be a little bit too wide. I'm gonna worry about getting this top piece right first and then I'll work on the bottom.
Okay. This pin's kind of thick, so I'm going to trade it out for a small one. And then this one. Okay, so it's all pinned. That's what it will look like. Now, now is the time to take a good look and make sure everything is the way you want it to be. If you need to change something, repin or whatever, this would be the good time to, a good time to do it. I always want to pin the very point, but I'm afraid that it's just not going to look right. See how that but then it's not always, I mean, it's not completely straight here either. These points are not always centered, so don't get hung up on it. Okay. I feel like I might have gone off a little bit. I'll have to check that later. Make sure there's no tucks underneath. All right, let's see 
how I did. Okay. It does look like I got off here. So, and although this looks like it kind of goes straight across this placket, it's off from this line, but this whole area is off. So um, be mindful of this. And um, even if you wanted to use like a, um, a stitch witchery where you put a dot under here and press it, just kind of hold it still, you can do that. Um, especially if you don't plan to alter it anymore, that would be acceptable. So yes, that was, um, that does not look beautiful. The underside, that's what happened. That's what happened right here. It looks like I could have pulled this out a little bit more. And I think that's what it was. I, I didn't lay everything as flat as it could have been. So if it was supposed to be like this. So you have this extra here. So that's look, that looks like what went wrong. But again, um, my mistake, you guys be careful for that. Now, what we're going to do is put the cuff on. Now I wanna show you the cuff. When you make a cuff, you can see the outside is interfaced. And so it has that nice flat look. And um, when you sew, this right here can be ripply, especially on this fabric, because it's really thin. So when you put it on, we're going to sew from the top part. And then the feed dogs, when they're doing this thing, this is going to, it's gonna grab this and kind of even everything out. So we're going to pin this on and then get started. Okay, so you know that they had some tucks in here. The tucks are usually closest to the large placket. So when I do a shirt, I prefer to do the right sleeve first because you have to deal with the pleats at the end of sewing your cuff on, not at the beginning. So you can have all this sewn on and then put the, the pleats in which just makes it easier to figure out how much you need to be taken up in a pleat. Now, because this doesn't have the, um, the needle marks, the needle holes where they were sewn, you can either measure these and then transfer those marks onto here, or you can align them with this and this looks really big so i'm going to see how big the seam allowance is here but they don't even look they're not all the same so so this is about three eighths of an inch this is oh my gosh more like five eighths. So you can eyeball it, you can mark it with a, a chalk or um, align it to the inside of that. Your sleeve might be a little off, but um, probably not much. I'm going to go ahead and mark it. Let me get my other chalk marker because it's a wheel and it will drop the um, chalk a lot easier without moving the fabric. Since we are towards the end of the alteration, I'm just going to go ahead and use the powder chalk, like I said, because it's not going to move the fabric. And it gives it a really beautiful clean line and another reason i like to use the right do the right sleeve first is because um you don't really have to use as many pins or, or any pins at all if you don't want to 
just makes it a little easier. Okay, from here, just align your um, cuff with the chalk mark that you made. Okay, so we're getting towards the end of the cuff. So I'm going to take the placket and tuck it in here up to that chalk line. And I will pin this in place. Now I, you see all this fabric that needs to go into um, pleats. These are going to be pretty big pleats. Um, if you feel like the pleats are too big and the sleeves are still too um, wide, then when you cut the shirt, I mean, even right now is not too late to go in and narrow the shirt sleeve S because all the placket work, it did not change anything as far as um, you can still do it without messing with the plackets. So I'm just gonna stick with this and then continue sewing. this point all we need to do is um, take your chalk mark right inside your buttonhole so you will know where to um, sew your button back on make sure you get a good chalk mark in there now this right here we're gonna figure out how this works when the button is on So I'm going to get my wax thread.
Now it looks like all you'll need to do is just push that fabric out of the way and button it up. And there you have it. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing. And if you'd like to uh, support this channel, hit the thank you button. And I will see you in the next video.